Hey, what's up, everybody? Listen, if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. Yeah, I got your attention now, right? Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Number three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Number four, you can make money from your podcast. That's right. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum viewership. Number five, it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, everybody? You are listening to the What Now podcast, where we discuss ways of effectively addressing life's most difficult moments. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the What Now podcast. My name is Cliff. Uh, and you know, the What Now podcast is where we discuss positive ways of facing life's most difficult moments. And we mature, so we no longer call them difficult moments. We understand that these are defining moments. We have the ability, the right, and the authority to define these moments in our lives. Why? Because God has delegated that power to us. The creator has given that unto us. And who are we not to exercise that right in our lives? All right. So we've committed to exercising it on this show. So let's get right into tonight's topic. Tonight's topic is, and I'm going to give you the topic and then we're going to work ourselves backwards. Tonight's topic is I house solutions, not grudges. I house solutions, not grudges. Now that that sounds very powerful. And I'm not going to get on here and throw my hand back and throw my head back and start preaching. But I want you to understand something. Life is full of choices. And based upon the choices that we make, each choice that we make comes with a set of consequences, a set of consequences. Now, I've been a person in my life at a younger age. I held grudges. I was not a very vocal person. So I was cons- what, what my pastor used to call me. Uh, I think she said a volcano and somebody else used to call me a ticking time bomb, a ticking time bomb, because I held everything and I suppressed everything and suppressed it and suppressed it and suppressed it. And then Eventually, the lava poured out and I exploded or the the, uh, the ticking stopped and the bomb blew up. And a lot of times when the bomb blew up and the volcano exploded, I always ending, ended up displacing my anger and my frustration on the wrong person. You know, thank God for maturity and thank God for therapy because it has taught me how to effectively communicate how I feel. Now, granted, I'm still working sometimes on communicating it in a manner that doesn't hurt feelings. But the reality is that sometimes I can't control somebody else's feelings being hurt because sometimes people aren't hearing the way that I am saying it. They are hearing their perception of what I'm saying. And sometimes it's hitting triggers and taking them back to situations and they're associating me with somebody else. Y'all know how we do when we don't deal with the things in our lives. It always leaks over into something else. But anyway, so as I said, I'm not that ticking time bomb anymore. I don't have a problem expressing how I feel. And I have worked very hard to um, understand what I need to carry and what I need to release. See, the ministry side of me used to feel as if if you came to me with your problems and you came to me with your burdens, now hear me out now. I will be there for you. I will rock with you 100%. But I've also learned that sometimes people aren't coming for help. 
Sometimes people aren't coming just to vent. Sometimes people are just coming because they just want you to carry it for them. So I've learned how to release what needs to be released, carry what needs to carry, needs to be carried and keep out of my spirit the things that would contaminate me. Anthony Baker Jr. is the CEO of a nonprofit community organization called Helping the Homeless. As an organization, they are committed to changing lives and making others smile. In addition to providing hands-on services for the homeless community all over Philadelphia, they also have a Big Brothers mentoring program where participating youth are taught the value of giving back to their community. To learn more about the organization, call 215-487-8589 or email them at hthphilly at gmail.com. Now, I do a good job at contaminating my spirit on my own, so I don't need any help when it comes to contaminating my spirit. So I have to work hard even at my own contamination just to make sure that I keep my spirit, my heart, my mind, uh, my soul, even my body free of extra weight. Now I need to work on the extra weight of my physical body, but that's a conversation for another day. Okay. Anyway, I thank God that I'm not a person that holds grudges. I'm not a person that holds grudges. I am grateful for that. I can love you. Even if I heard you dog me, there's a lot of people in my life that don't even know that I heard the conversations they had. See, they don't even know that the person they had the conversation with came to me and told me the conversation. It's their reliable source because they don't show me receipts as well. And then you have those that will turn on each other and tell what the other person said. I, I've experienced all of that. I've experienced all of that. But one of the things that I've learned in life, and I don't want to sound like I've just been free of this thing. There are some people that I've talked about as well. You know, there's some wrong that I've done as well. I'm not perfect. If you hang around me for two minutes, you'll understand just how perfect I'm not. I do not put myself on a pedestal. I own everything about me. All right. So I want to share this story uh, because a couple of weeks ago, somebody wrote me on Facebook I'm talking about I don't hold grudges. OK, uh, somebody wrote me on Facebook and they let me know that they were interested in me. Um, that's a sidebar. If you're interested in me, don't pursue me. Let me pursue you. Okay. If you ever have a question about me being interested in you, you'll know I'm interested in you. I will give you attention. Okay. And I, let me explain that. Cause now some of you might say, Oh, he gives me a lot of attention. No, 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 no. I won't give you the attention I give to everybody else. You'll know, you'll know it'll come out of my mouth. So you don't have to come to me. Coming to me is a turn off to me. Okay. It's really a turn off, especially if you're aggressive. You know, that is really a major turn off, like chill. Make me feel as if there's a chase somewhere. Don't make me feel as like, feel as if I have to run and you're going to try to chase me. Okay. Um, that was just a little sidebar there. But anyway, they were telling me how they were interested in me, but what was uh the reservation they had was that they had heard something about me in my past. Now, I will very adamantly say that what they told me they heard about me in my past was a lie. It was a lie, a lie, a lie, a lie. OK, now they explained to me that. It wasn't necessarily that they believed the person. However, their approach showed they believed it. It wasn't necessarily that they believed the person. They just wanted to give me the opportunity to clear my name. One of the things that I've learned in life, guys, 
is that you do not chase a lie with truth because you will spend your whole life trying to prove something is a lie to someone who has already bought into or or somebodies who have already bought into the lie. You don't have to prove that. That's one of the greatest things about me is that I don't, I'm not moved by people liking me. I'm not moved by being accepted by people. Um, I'm really my own man. Uh, as I told y'all before, the quarantine didn't really affect me because I don't mind being by myself. I actually like me. I actually like me. Sometimes I don't, but I overall, I really like me. I love me. I, I'm looking in the mirror right now. I really genuinely love me. Okay. So anyway, you know, I explained to them, you know, I wasn't, that's not anything that I'm going to entertain. And are you thinking of selling or buying your dream home? Then contact Harrison Domerkin, the people's agent. As a licensed realtor in both Delaware and Maryland, Harrison desires to help you sell or buy your home and he promises you that your experience with him will be great. Call or text him today at 302-260-0659 or email him at harrisondomerkent at gmail.com. So I stopped writing them and I just really began to think, and I was just like, God, I thank you, yo, because I'm pretty sure where that information came from. Um, No, I'm very sure, very sure where I could trace it all the way back to it. And the thing about it was, um, I thank God for how he created me, even though I used to hate being like this. Y'all don't understand. I hated being like this because a lot of people looked at me, looked at it as me being a punk. And there was a season of my life where I was a punk. I share that story too. But people look at you as being a punk. They take your kindness for weakness. They think you're soft. You need to be more aggressive. You need to confront this person and confront that person. And don't get it twisted. I'll confront. When confrontation is needed, I will confront, but I will be led by the spirit of God. That is the one thing about me. I'm not one that's going to jump up and make rash decisions. I'm going to process some things. So I thank God as I was sitting and I was thinking, I was like, Lord, thank you. And as I was sitting and just meditating, uh, the creator asked me, do you want to hold grudges or do you want to hold solutions? Do you want to house grudges or do you want to house solutions? And I really started thinking about that thing. And I was like, whoa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that I am not one who houses grudges, because if you are one that houses grudges and you are sent to be a solution, it is going to taint the solution that you are presenting. And if you're going to be a solution, you can never allow a grudge to stand in the place of the solution that you're supposed to be representing. So I vow, and I want each of you to vow, that we will be ones that house solutions and not grudges. Now, the reality is, in order to be one that vows to do that, that means we're going to have to deal with some of those deep-rooted issues inside of us that still has us holding grudges and not letting go. Some of us are holding grudges with people that aren't even thinking about us. There are grudges from years and years and years and years ago, and your bones have dried up. You're dealing with arthritis. You're dealing with other aches and pains in your body because it has dried you up. You need to free yourself enough to understand I hold solutions, so I have to release the grudge. I hold solutions, 
So I have to release the grudges. See, one thing about purpose, one thing about uh, ministry and business or a vision, a vision should always offer a solution. It should be a solution to a problem. Sometimes our vision hasn't been able to be the solution to the problem that's presented because we're still holding on to the problem ourselves. Some of you are solutions in relationships. Some of you are solutions in finances. Some of you are solutions in education. Some of you are solutions in uh whatever, your solution. But if you are holding grudges in any of those areas, or you're holding grudges with anything that's connected to the er- those areas, no wonder you can't be the solution that you're called and created to be. Because you won't even allow yourself to be the solution for yourself. Let it go. Let it go. People are going to think and say whatever they want to think and say. And sometimes I always say this. I'm all about embracing your truth. Embrace your truth. But please make sure that your truth, from an integrity standpoint, don't allow your truth to be attached to a lie about somebody else. Even if it's your perception of what happened, explain that it's your perception. Free yourself from that victim mentality. Because if I have to go around and tear you down in order to get people to embrace me and build me up, the reality is they're not embracing me. They're not building me up. They're building up a lie that was told and you don't have to tell a lie because you are a solution. Embrace that solution today. Embrace you today. And let that bitterness go. Let it go. I house solutions. I don't house grudges. I meant let that grudge go. I house solutions. I have no time to house grudges. All right. I'm out of here. I just want you all to be a house of solutions. All right. Appreciate each and every one of you listening. You have any feedback or anything you would like uh, to add to the show? Always reach out to me at info at cliftonpettyjohn dot com again info at cliftonpettyjohn dot com as I always say create a great day walk with purpose and by all means guys execute your vision peace many people define stagnation as not producing or being at a standstill. I get it. However, I would like to add a little weight to the definition and say that I may be producing, I may be moving. However, my production and my movements are disrespectful to the purpose that's inside of me, to the greatness that's inside of me. If that's going on, that's stagnation as well. And that's okay. Guess why? Because I have developed a tool. I wrote a book called From Stagnation to Transformation. And that book was written specifically for individuals that feel stuck, that feel lost, that feel like they're just wandering in the wilderness, that feel like they just, I need something is just missing. It's okay. I want you to head over to www.cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation. There you're going to find a complimentary portion of the book. That's right. A complimentary portion of the book. I want you to read that portion. After that, it's going to ignite such a fire inside of you that you're going to want to purchase the co- your personal copy of From Stagnation to Transformation. So I want you to do that as well. Why? Because I believe that it'll give you a 21 day jump start to fulfilling or re-identifying purpose in whatever core area you find yourself stagnant in. So again, visit www.cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation.